Okay, introduction introduction to the water recovery system. This uh, involves filling uh, either portable water tanks or boondocking from uh, an RV. Although if you're filling directly to the water tanks on your RV, realize you may have parking issues and driving issues on very soft ground leading up to naturally standing water. Uh, items involved with this are uh, some garden hose, uh, water containers, or your RV. This, uh, uh, in what I call is a dirty water container and a clean water container. The dirty one can be open top. I, I use that for hauling stuff and, and it works with a hand truck. That's why it's set up like that. The clean water container is one that we will be filtering additional water into. Or if the water going into this looks clear enough, I may go into this. This is not drinking water. It is uh, basically utility water. But for sink and stuff like that, we want relatively clean water too. Uh, we've, so we've got the, uh, the hose, the 12-volt uh, pump from Harbor Freight. It's, uh, we're not looking for a super high-powered pump, but this one says it's 300 gallons an hour. So on a, uh, uh, I think that's about a, I don't know, 10, 20, 10, 20 gallon container. It, it should fill it fairly quickly. A 12-volt battery. Um, you could try to run that type of a pump off of power tool batteries. I just think you'll burn through several power tool batteries. So I, I hiked a 12 volt battery up here. Some additional hose fittings. And these, these soaker hoses are, they get wet to the touch because they're made to soak, right? The thing is they pack flat. And so it's easier to pack in than an additional one of these. And I may be trimming this 50 foot hose down. But these little things will work good for the inlet I'm sorry for the outlet of the pump, but not the inlet because they, uh, they, it, I'll show you later. The extra fittings. And then this little thing here is used in irrigation systems to slow down the flow and, um, I guess keep water from backflowing into, um, a hose system from an irrigation thing. But this is a really perfect, good, uh, water pickup filter to at least keep us from getting particles and crap. Uh, through our flow, you can see there's screens in there. There's some fiberglass filter element. Uh, you get these at some farm supply stores, garden supply stores. This is what it is. It, it's labeled as an irrigator. But when we're picking up water out of a pond like this, and there's grass and leaves, we want to avoid getting junk through the hose and then into the pump. So this is going to play a critical role. And then uh, I've got some electrical tape, some bailing wire, and a stick. The, the stick's going to be involved, and we'll show you how that goes in a few minutes. Okay, change of plans. Uh, the link, you have, you having this whole 50-foot hose as a pickup wasn't going to work. And uh, basically what they say is a self-priming pump wasn't very good at self-priming. So the inlet side I cut way short to, um, to just because we couldn't push the water. We can, we can push water a lot better than we can pull it. So I've got 50 foot of hose. I realize the pump obviously works better out of the water. Not the end of the world if it gets uh, uh, submerged momentarily, but it's, it's not meant to be a waterproof pump. The, uh, so once I got the hose primed, um, and of course I, I used a shorter section, had to splice it, but it's, it seems okay. The little filter on the end is doing its job. We're, uh, we're, we've got 50 foot of hose total we're moving this and I plugged that thing in just moments ago uh, we've I, I, I'm on the video here for one minute and uh, we're half full okay so this, this is uh, a good strong flow of water you can see but this water is going to take additional filtration um, this is mainly just for moving water uphill uh, obviously not very labor intensive and if somebody were doing, let's say, clandestine gardening, they're going to need to move a lot more water into a lot larger bladders. But for survival purposes, we're, the gardening aspect of this place isn't, isn't happening for quite a while. We're, we're not doing, you know, special clandestine gardening. It's basically just to have some emergency water up here. And we'll be filtering it, and it's, it's just because it's a hard hike in. This pond is very seasonal, and I, I want to have a water supply up here, and I, I'm not going to hike all that water in. So as we can see, we're almost full. Um, it was maybe a minute before I turned on the camera. 
maybe a minute. So we got plenty of juice in the battery. This would work with that relatively portable solar power system that I've showed in other videos. So this would become the um, the water pumping aspect of that. The other thing, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the other thing that is entirely uh, entirely sufficient for showering. The soaker hose we could use it, but I, I for this purpose in this video and everything right now. I'm going to hike that soaker hose back down. Just leave the green hose up here. It's not very expensive stuff. The other thing I'd like to do is give it some time in the sun just so it straightens out and it's not as coiled up. But that's moving water and uh, relatively in, in, inexpensively used battery. I, I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. The water pump from Harbor Freight, and maybe I'll do a separate review on the water pump. Uh, $39.95 and of course if you play the coupon games you got it. The garden hose maybe 20 bucks. That little filter on the end I think was seven dollars and again they call that a watering thing but you know what it's it's a fucking filter okay so uh, it does what it's supposed to do. I, I don't know why they mislabeled it maybe it's uh, one of those covert uh, clandestine gardening items but like I said we're just trying to move water for survival purposes and it's a hell of a lot easier to hike empty barrels up here than it is to hike um, uh, full containers. Now, the other thing that some people do is uh, inflatable stuff, uh, like like inflatable pools and things like that that they would hike up and then cover. Um, we're not, just not going to be needing that much water up here, and uh, I'm not I'm not going to be. I, I'll be taking showers at the lodge. I, I just want to make sure that I've got some utility water up here during the dry season and uh, it's also convenient for let's say putting out the campfire um, and, and so salvaging a chunk of this pond although two strong guys can hike a 4x4 water tote up here and uh, by doing this in stages to get up on the side of the mountain then in the dry season we still have running water at the tents and stuff running water well, not bad not 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 too bad of a lifestyle and uh, we'll be prepping this woods for permaculture uh, as you can see the eagles are hanging out and enjoying themselves and that's the water system so disconnecting I, I, I pull everything out of the water relatively carefully I really really want to avoid dragging this thing in the mud okay because once these things get really packed with mud uh, you can reverse water through it to, to push junk out, but we really uh, uh, we don't want it packed with mud because it might have to be thrown away, and you know they cost money. The other thing is to uh, pull the hose out of the water container or disconnect or, or have it shut off, or else it's just going to backward siphon uh, right through the pump too. It, it can actually backward siphon through the pump. But um, we'll be packing this up. My advice on something like this is leave most of it on site. It's not so incredibly valuable that somebody's going to say, Ooh, I now own a water pump. I'm going to hike it out of here. It's my reward for a hiking trip. Okay, so, you, you know, you find a good little spot to put the stuff. And for setting up a little survival area, uh, this, this is the type of stuff where every trip in, you take a little more material in, and eventually you build up that area to be a pretty decently... You know it'll have its own little micro infrastructure so here we've we're, we've got the beginnings of running water um, I'm, I'm gonna probably leave a small solar power system up here in a small building with the very first building to go up and fortunately now this is this is relatively well guarded property if you're doing this <coughs> out in parkland or something like that I would advise heavy camouflage, but there's a high likelihood you'll still be okay. Uh, it, it just it, It's not so incredibly valuable that, that people want to hike it out. The issue would be if they're associated with law enforcement and they see this type of stuff, they're, they're probably going to think pot grower or uh, moonshiner. And so it depends on what goes on in your area. Uh, but if they, you know, hopefully they're not going to find your stuff. But if they look around for plants and they don't find any, they're going to lose interest and leave. So that's that's basically how that would go. In a water recovery, we want to look for uh, 
water it's got some depth either either depth of a well depth of a stream is kind of a second choice but we want some depth because we we really don't want surface water if we can avoid it in a water recovery operation uh, sometimes it's not avoidable you got to dig a hole and then recover your water out of the hole with the pump the reason you you kind of want to avoid surface water even in in rocky mountain snow melt regions is this okay that's that's animal shit that was dried out and then rehydrated because of the water flowing over it and so all sorts of buggy parasite stuff bad stuff you don't want to drink is uh, downstream now okay so when you're gonna set up a recovery water recovery operation and it's it's running water of some sort you want to take a hike upstream and see what you're dealing with and if you deal with something like this you see a lot of deer shit a lot of animal shit where the water is kind of melting and gathering you, uh, you you don't want that to be your first choice for water recovery you want to look for someplace else and, and try to get the cleanest water your filters are going to last longer and you'll you'll be at less risk if, if you put that water to use even if it's just wash water you'll be at less risk if you try to avoid animal shit where the water is